are back. Oh boy, it's gonna be Again, rough. Welcome to today's Wind's blowing. We're right behind home plate. All fans acting responsible. Dirt <laughs> flying everywhere. Language or disorderly <laughs> conduct is unacceptable and oh. unwelcome. Let's afford the participants and your fellow fans the respect they deserve. Your cooperation. Fairview will be the home team. Well, let's play ball. Fairview coming in at 24-1, 7-0 in the GMC, their 2023 Green Medals Conference champion. Bethany Schneider behind the plate. Alexa Taylor at first. Kayla Mavis at second. Addison Rhodes is at short. Cindy Merritt at third. Gracie Brown is in left. Gary Zedike is in center. And Brooklyn Sims is in right for Coach Renolette and the Apache. You said Coach Renolette picked up her 400th win recently, so congratulations to Coach Stacy Renolette. 408 and 138 in her career. That was April 24th. She picked up her 400th win versus Hicksville, so congratulations again to Coach Renolette. A lot of wins in that Renolette family. <laughs> Lots. Now, buddy. Second baseman. Pedro Sisa, 14 and 2 on the season, the area of, or 21 and 1 on the season, the area of .80, 131 innings pitch, 26 runs, 15 earned runs, 75 hits allowed, 182 strikeouts, and 13 walks for Page. Are we. Delicado steps in. First pitch. Foul tipped into the glove. Strike one. We're underway here in the regional semifinals. First pitch is 202. Temperature is 78 degrees. Very windy blowing from right to left here at Jack Hewitt Field. Very strong as you can see the line just kick up and go flying as the pitch by Recisa was a bit outside. Ball one, strike one. Just underway here. Top of inning number one. Johnstown Johnny's 24 and 2 coming in. Cisa in the circle. 1-1 one, one pitch. Bonnet in the air. Coming to grab it is Sydney Merrick from third base. So that's a first out. Pop out to the third baseman. Pitcher number five, Walter. Casey Walters steps in. She was player of the year. Bad 412, six homers, 27 RBIs with four steals. She bats from the right side of the plate. Rasisa pitch. A little bit low. Ball one. Coda Staffen is on deck. Another first team all conference. First five are all conference for the Johnnies. Rasisa's pitch high and away. Ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Rams and Huron play at 5 o'clock after this. Winner will play Saturday at 12. Pitch swung on and fouled off the backstop right here below us. Two balls and a strike to the number two hitter, pitcher Macy Walters. Walters will give her stats when she heads out there. Very impressive season as well for the player of the year in the Licking County League. Pitch is high. Three balls and a strike. Ursisa headed to Anderson University in the fall. Congratulations to Paige. 3-1 pitch coming. Outside corner, strike two called. Count goes full at 3-2 and two to the number two hitter, Macy Walters. Trying to turn my head so the wind doesn't blow in the mic as much. I got the sound protector on, but I don't think today it's going to really matter. Wind's just blowing probably 15, 20 miles an hour at time. Swung on, fouled off first base side, out of play. Count stays full at three and two. One out, nobody on. Top of the first inning just underway here in Bucyrus at Jack Hewitt Field. Home of the Lady Redmond. The senior righty, Rasisa, back in the circle. Payoff pitch. Inside, ball four. Casey Walters draws a one-out walk. She will head down to first base. That's going to bring up the number three hitter, Dakota Staffen. Staffen, first team as well, all Third conference. Baseman. Staffen. 494, 12 homers, 40 RBIs for Staffen. 
bats from the right side. <laughs> Runner at first, Walters, four steals. Pitch heads to the backstop. Waller is going to go down to second base on the wild pitch. So the Johnnies have a runner at second with one out. Pitch was a ball to Staffen. Rasisa looks at the wristband. Gets the pitch from the coaching staff. 1-0 pitch. Swung on. Little blooper. First base side. And Alexa Taylor snags it for out number two. Pop out to Short the first stop. baseman. Eddie Triplett steps in. Triplett, 518, 10 homers, 36 RBIs, and 13 steals for the cleanup hitter. She will be at shortstop in the field. Runner at second for Johnstown. Two outs now. Cease's pitch to Triplett. Just a bit low. Ball one. Plus our equipment's right in the sun, too. We're trying to shade it with some white towels and whatnot so that the wind doesn't get us, the sun will. Rossi says 1-0 to Triplett. Tap her right back to Page. One hopper. She fires over to Taylor to retire. Triplett. 1-3 on the put out. In the inning for Johnstown. No runs. No hits. No fair view errors. One left on base after half an inning of play here in Bucyrus. Jack Hewitt Field. We are scoreless here on your Fairview Athletic Boosters scoreboard. BSN Sports, the recognized leader in team athletic gear. BSN forms partnerships with educators, coaches, and students to build school pride, student engagement, and community spirit. Our partnerships give you access to the most brand names in the industry with all of the hottest products at the best prices. From Nike to Wilson to Under Armour, we can customize any team needs. Since 1972, BSN Sports has brought you the brands that make you untouchable on the field, the court, or anywhere else you play your sport. Contact BSN local sports rep Jim Gares for any of your sports needs at 419 419- 576-8940. After half inning of play here back at Bucyrus. Got a runner a second that Johnny's did. They did not score. For Fairview, Paige Rasisa will lead it off, followed by Kerry Z. Dyke. Allison Rhodes. Alexis Taylor hits fourth. Batting fifth is Gracie Brown. Batting sixth, Courtney Grinnell. Seventh is Bethany Schoeniger. Eighth is for the Apaches is Kayla Mavis. And batting ninth for Coach Renault is Brooklyn Sims. On the mound for the Johnnies is Macy Walters. 14-2, 108 innings pitch, 57 hits, 24 runs, 15 earned runs, ERA of .97, 198 strikeouts, 25 walks for Walters. Patty Zach is behind the plate. Emily Yanzagura is at first base. Aubrey... Delicado is at second. Eddie Triplett is at short. Dakota Stephen is at third. Outfield. Jenna Hashendell is in left. Laney Zach is in center. And in right field. I forgot to write her down, which I apologize. <laughs> I mean, the hasteness of everything going around. I forgot to write that down. So the player of the year in both volleyball and softball leads off. Paige Rosisa, 522 for Paige. First pitch is a ball. Paige, 522, 13 homers and 43 runs batted in. She bats from the left side. Walters pitch to Rosisa. All on the count to Rosisa. Pitch. Fouled off on the third base side into the little protective screen we have here. One ball, one strike, just underway here. Bottom of inning number one, no score here in the regional semifinals. Winner plays Saturday at 12 o'clock. Pitch to Rasisa, high and away. Ball two, two balls and a strike to Page. Gary Zedike on bet on deck for Fairview. Two balls and a strike. The righty Walters. Pitches high and away. Check swing by Page. Three ball. Or they called a strike, actually, on the check swing. No, they didn't. Yeah, they did. So it's two balls and two strikes. She tried to check it. She could not. Walters, 2-2 two, two coming. She has for time. Has to reset her wristband. 
coach for a lot, coaching down there at third for Fairview. 2-2 two, two coming to Recisa. Swung on and missed. Down goes Recisa. Strikeout for Walters. First out in the bottom of the first inning. Bring up number two hitter, Kerry Zedike. Zedike, first team all GMC, is in center field. 4.58 for Kerry. 13 runs batted in, 16 stolen bases. Two bats from the left side as well. Walters pitched to Zedike. She bunts it, fouls it back. Strike one. Carey, GMC Player of the Year in basketball this past season. Had a heck of a season. Actually, a heck of a career. 1,000-point score for Carey. Pitch to Zedai. Strike two. So Waller's quickly ahead of Zedai. No balls and two strikes. O2 oh, pitch from Walters to Zedike. Check swing just a bit outside. They appeal down to third. He says she did not swing. One ball and two strikes to the senior, Kerry Zedike. Heard the temperature supposed to drop today. There's already a little bit of chill in the air. Plus the wind. Supposed to pick up more. I don't know how the heck it's supposed to pick up more. The one two pitches high and away. Count evens two balls and two strikes to the Apache's number two hitter, Kerry Zedike. Allison Rhodes. Oh, wait, it's on deck. Waller's 2 2 pitch coming to Zedite. Tap, second base side, second baseman Del Sato up with it, fires over to first base in time to retire Zedite. 4 3 on the put out for out number two. That's going to bring up the number three hitter, shortstop Allison Rhodes. Shortstop, Rhodes. Rhodes, 435, 10 homers, 46 runs batted in. Nelson with four stolen bases on the season. No score here, bottom of the first pitch. Outside, just, yeah, he got the corner. Strike one on Allison Rhodes. Alexa Taylor in the on-deck circle for the Apaches. Oh, one outside. Goodness, goodness. Count evens at a ball and a strike. One ball, one strike. Walters looks at the wristbands. Most teams have that nowadays. One, one. Pitch to Allison. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Rhodes behind the ball and two strikes to Macy Walters. Johnny's just a little bit northeast of Columbus. You're wondering where Johnstown is. You're probably wondering where Fairview's at. <laughs> One, two, pitch coming to Rhodes. Swung on and missed. Down goes Rhodes and the Apaches in the first inning. For Fairview, no runs, no hits, no Johnny Ayers, nobody left on base. Through an inning of play here at Jack Hewitt Field. The Aaron View Cyrus, no score here on your Fairview Athletic Boosters scoreboard. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun of Defiance has been serving Northwest Ohio for over 30 years. Need cash? Collateral pawn loans are available. Stop in and see Shar and the staff at 5727 State Route 66 North in Defiance, Ohio. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun carries a full line of new and pre-owned items that include firearms, ammo, optics, game systems, knives, jewelry, and Amish poly furniture. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun has in-house jewelry as well as a gunsmith on site. Hours of operation are Monday 10 to 7, Tuesday through Friday 10 to 5, and Saturday 9 to 3. Got questions? Give them a call 419-784-9880 or visit them online at woodenindianpawn.com or visit their Facebook page. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun, your locally owned pawn specialists. Say go Rams. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. <laughs> Sorry, people from Fairview. I have a lot of, I have a lot of like everything snoring in my commercials. Leading off here is Lady Zach. She's the number five hitter. Five, six, and seven. First pitch is swung on and missed. Zach, 395, three homers, 22 RBIs, and 13 stolen bases. She was first team all-conference as well. Rosisa. Find it right back to Paige. She fires it over to Alexa Taylor for the out. 1-3 on the putout for the first out here in the second inning. Paige, she just gets it, and she just fires it over to her first base. 
Addie Zach, the number six hitter, steps in. 412 with four RBIs for Zach. Addie Zach, that is. Cease is just the pitch. Fires it. Swung on. Fouled off first base side. Out of play. Over by the school. To our right. Football field right out there to the center. Guess the wind's picking up even more as it could. 0-1 pitch is inside. Just misses. Count evens a ball and a strike to Addie Zach. Back to back, Zach. Swing you, Zach, in at the top of the first inning. Addy Zach. 1 pitch. 1 1 pitch outside. Just missed. Two balls and a strike. And Sakura waits on deck for the Johnnies. Rasisa's 2 1 pitch coming to Addy Zach. Good shot. Line shot just outside the line down there at third base. Just over the head of Coach Mike Justice, who was the coach of the year in the Lickens County League this past season, or this current season, I guess. Past league season. Count to Zach is two balls and two strikes. Base is empty. One out here. No score in the top of inning number two. Where Cease's pitch swung on and fouled off on the right side. Count stays at two balls and two strikes. Andy Zach bats from the right side. 2 2 pitch coming off the right arm of the senior, Racisa. Just a bit low. Trying to get her to chase. Count goes full at three balls and two strikes. Then Page comes in at 21 and 1. She's just walked 13 batters this season. 182 strikeouts for Page. ERA of 0. .80. Payoff pitch swung on, fouled right behind us. Count stays full at three and two. Nice little softball distributor they have hanging on the fence here at Bu Cyrus. Jack Hewitt Field. Three two pitch coming to Addie Zach. Brings the payoff pitch. Swung on, foul off again. First base side. Count stays full at three and two. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here on Tenor Rams Live. Brought to you by the Fairview Athletic Boosters. So, thinking about it and you haven't done so, become an athletic booster today and make sure you thank a booster for the broadcast. 3 2 pitch coming again from Rosisa to Addy Zach. Fly ball in the center field. Nice running catch out there by Kerry Zedike. Zedike or horse caught that in left center field to retire Zach for the second out. And Sakura steps in. Emily and Sakura bending in the seventh spot plays at first base. 312, 15 RBIs for Ian Sakura. Cease's first pitch is outside, ball one. They set the defense when we get a chance. Cease on the mound, Schoeninger behind the plate, Taylor at first, Davis at second, Rhodes at short, and Barrett's at third. Outfield after this, 1-0 pitch coming. Fouled off, first base side. Gracie Brown's in left field, Terry Zedek's in center, and Brooklyn Sims is in right for the Ferry Apaches, coached by head coach Stacy Renolette. 24 seasons for Stacy Renolette, 408 wins, 138 losses. Picked up her 400th career win a few weeks ago. Fouled back, made Shane over here from the Crescent News shake a little bit. Moved his way, <laughs> one ball in, two strikes. From Yan Sakura, a great article by Shane in yesterday's paper about the Tenora and Fairview region here. Half on Fairview, half on Tenora. So pick that up. You still get it today. One, two pitch. Stays a bit high. Count evens at two balls and two strikes to Yan Sakura. Two outs, nobody on. Two, two pitch coming from Racisa. Fouled back again, just over us. 
as we get a mouthful of infield dust. <laughs> you already can't see my monitor. It's just collected with dust all over. 2-2 two -two from Yan Sakura. Rosisa back on the pitcher's mound in the circle. 2-2 two -two pitch. Low ball three. Three balls and two strikes to Yan Sakura. Kayla Fain is on deck for the Johnnies. 24 and 2 for Johnstown. Payoff pitch coming. Swung on infield pop. Rhodes calls it out. Puts it away for the third out. Pop out to Allison Rhodes. In the inning for the Johnnies. No runs, no hits, no Apache's errors, and nobody's left. After an inning and a half here on your Fairview Athletic Booster scoreboard, we have no score. We'll be back right after this as soon as I find an ad to play. I can't see him, actually. The sun's in the way of my, my monitor here. The Law Office of Wiener Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a full-service law firm dedicated to providing quality legal services in defiance in all of Northwest Ohio. Since 1965, their attorneys have had a well-deserved reputation of excellence in serving clients with a focus on integrity, advocacy, and understanding. At Wiener Hill, Weber, and Stanley, we are a general practice law firm that can handle all of your legal needs. We offer high-quality legal work and personal client service, and each of our attorneys is committed to providing you with top-notch legal support. Attorneys Jim Wiener, Danny Hill, Cam Stanley, and Ian Weber are here to assist you. Give them a call at 419-782-3010 or visit them online at wienerlawoffice.com. The Law Office of Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Back here, bottom of the second inning we go. Four, five, and six for the Apaches. First pitch to Alexis Taylor, bet outside. Taylor, 386, three homers, 26, runs batted in. She has four steals. Gracie Brown and Courtney Grinnell will follow. Up. Macy Walters. Oh, one pitch. A little bit low. Count evens at a ball and a strike. Base is empty. Nobody out here in the bottom of the second inning. We are scoreless here on your Fairview Athletic, uh, Fairview Athletic Boosters scoreboard. Macy Walters pitched. Swung on and missed. Alexis Taylor. Out on the count, a ball and two strikes. Should have bought some of those scuba goggles with me. <laughs> Get the dirt out of my face. <laughs> In a serious, kind of not joking way. Pitch is fouled off first base side out of play. One ball and two strikes to Alexa, May or Alexa Taylor at first base for the Apaches. 24 and 1 for Fairview. They finish your 2023 GMC champs. 2-2 pitch coming. Swung on. Fouled off again. First base side out of play. Taylor back in the box. 2-2 two -two for the 1-2 pitch coming. Popped up on the infield. Second baseman, shortstop collide. Somebody caught it out there. I'm not sure which girl caught it. Both of them hit the deck. That's the first out. That was almost a disaster. Triplet from short. And Del Cicado from second. Both. I assume both was calling and neither one hurt each other, but I'll put F5. I think the second baseman caught it. But that was almost a mess out there. Both seem to be fine. Del Cicado back on her feet. Gracie Brown steps in, 363 for Brown. First pitch is inside ball one to Gracie Brown. No homer, 16 RBIs and three steals for Gracie Brown. She's the left fielder for Coach Renolet. Courtney Grinnell on the on-deck circle. Swung on and miss. Count evens at a ball and a strike. No score here in the bottom of inning number two in the regional semifinals. 78 degrees at first pitch. 1-1 one, one coming. Swung on and missed for right two. As I said for Walter, she was 14-2. and two. He are, Her ERA coming in was .97. She had 198 strikeouts and 108 innings pitched. 1-2 coming to Brown. 
Comes a pitch from Walters. That's high. Got his act. Gonna get up out of the crouch there to snag it. Nobody on, though. One out. Brown at the plate. Two balls, two strikes to count to her. Swung on, fouled off on the third base side. Out of play. Count stays two and two. Johnstown in the first inning got a runner a second. That's the only scoring threat through the first inning and a half here. Count to Brown. Two-two pitch coming to Gracie Brown from Walters. Swung on and missed. Down goes Brown for the second out for Walters. That's her second strikeout. Courtney Grinnell will step in. She's a designated player. 308 for Grinnell, 13 RBIs. Grinnell bats from the right side. Grinnell. Base is empty. Two outs for the Apaches here in the bottom of the second. No score. Walters pitch coming to Grinnell. Swung on and missed. Strike one. The player of the Year, Pedro Cisa, and Player of the Year on the mound, Macy Walters, both Player of the Year in the conference. Pitch is just a bit low. Count even to the ball and the strike. Like broadcast from the football press box over there. It wouldn't be any wind. Maybe a long look, but... 1-1 one, one coming to Grinnell from Wallers. She swings and misses. Courtney Grinnell down in the count. One ball and two strikes. Patchy's average. Nine and a half runs a game. They hit 384 as a team. Pitch. Strike three on the outside corner. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Walters in the inning for Fairview. No runs, no hits, no Johnny Ayers, and nobody left on base. We're through two innings of play here at Bucyrus. We are scoreless on your Fairview Athletic Booster scoreboard. We'll be back right after this. Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School as well as the Tri-County area since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Contact them at 419-428-3000 or visit them online at Higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. Higby Embroider is a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award. Check out Tenora Rams Live. Live events, broadcast on YouTube, and post-game results, articles, schedules, and more can all be found on TenoraRams.com. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Back here, top of the third we go. Eight, nine, and one. Fane, Hushendale, and then the top for the Johnnies. First pitch, fouled back. Yes. Kayla Fane, 275 on the season. She has 13 runs batted in with six stolen bases. Perseus is 0-1 pitch coming. A little soft liner just inside the line in right field. Coming over to scoop it up is Brooklyn Sims. Was a field single for Fane to start the third for the Johnnies. Number nine hitter steps in. Left fielder. Hockendale. Hockendale, 167 with two runs batted in. She is the left fielder. She bats from the left side. Runner at first, Fane, six stolen bases on the season. Hockendale scores around the bunt. Pitches a strike called. No score here, top of the third inning from a very windy Bucyrus of Jack Hewitt Field. Rasisa's pitch. Botted. Right back to Rasisa. Page fires over to first base in time. Down to second base goes Fane. Oceandell does her job on the sacrifice. 1 3 on the putout for the first out. Going to bring up the top of the lineup. Del Cicado, 
Ten. Chicago, 362 on the season. She now popped out to the third baseman, Sydney Merritt, her first to bat. Bats from the left side, so a runner at second. One out for the Johnnies. A scoreless game here in the top of the third. She says pitch is swung on and missed. A little slap hitter. Most leadoff hitters are in softball. Del Cicado. Give her about a step and a half, two step advantage. Trying to slap as long as she stays in the batter's box. Rasisa's says 0 1 pitch coming. Swung on, fouled off, first base side out of play. Fantastic crowd here for this 2 o'clock start here in Bucyrus. Long drive for her. It's about two hours from Defiance in the car, just under. Girls are here already. Rams, later Rams, I should say. I used to be broadcasting. <laughs> the game doesn't involve Tenora. 0 2 pitches a bit outside. Del Cicado steps back in. One ball and two strikes. Runner at second. Fane. Rosisa's 1 2 pitch coming. Outside, off the glove of Schinniger allows the runner down to third. So Fane is on at third. Two balls and two strikes is the count to Del Cicado. Rosisa's 2 2 pitch coming. Swung on him. That's a huge out for Page. Out number two. First strikeout for Rasisa. Number two hitter Macy Walters steps in. She walked in the first. She bats 412. Six homers, 27 RBIs for Macy Walters. Rasisa's pitch. Strike on the outside corner. Runner at third. Fane, two outs now for the Johnnies. Pitch is just a bit low and inside. One ball and one strike to the number two hitter, Macy Wallers, player of the year in the Licking County Conference slash League. Licking County League, I think it is. Rosisa's 1 1 coming to Walters. Foul back. Shane. <laughs> uh, Shane from the Crescent News does great work over there. Make sure you pick up his copy that he wrote yesterday <laughs> from the Tenora and Fairview Regional Finals here. One-two pitch coming from Rasisa to Walters. Fouled back. Count stays at one and two. Johnny's with the runner at third with two outs. Johnny's have two runners in the scoring position, once in the first and again here in the third. Patchy's yet to have a base runner. One-two pitch. One, two pitch, oh, speed pitch, just missed. Page wanted that, did not get the call. Two balls and two strikes to Walters. Staffen is on deck for the Johnnies from Johnstown. Shisa gets a sign from the coach. Two, two pitch coming, it's fouled off. First base side on a play. Count stays. Two balls and two strikes. I think anybody that's here tonight is going to take about a 20-minute shower just to get the sand and dust and dirt off of them. <laughs> Ears, nose, you name it. 2-2 two -two from Walters. Foul ball. Down the right field line it goes. Out of play. Two balls and two strikes. Runner at third for Johnstown here in the scoreless tie in the top of the third. Waller steps in. 2-2 two -two pitch coming. Check swing outside corner. Strike three called. That's the third out. In the inning for the Johnnies. No runs. They get one hit. Nobody left. And the Johnnies leave a runner standard at stranded at third. Headed to the bottom of the third inning here on your Fairview Athletic Booster scoreboard. We are still scoreless. We'll be back right after this timeout. 
Is your business looking for someone to take the day-to-day worries of your bookkeeping off your mind? Weber Bookkeeping Solutions of Defiance is here to help. With over five years of small business bookkeeping experience and seven years in banking, you can be confident that your books are in the right hands with Jenny Weber. Let Weber Bookkeeping Solutions handle the monthly tracking and reports so that you can focus on your business goals. Contact Jenny at 419-956-1273 and you can also visit her on Facebook or at WeberBookkeeping.com. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Back here. Back here once again. Jack Hewitt Field in Bucyrus. We are scoreless. 7-8-9 for the Apache. Bethany, Bethany Schoeniger, Kayla Mavis, and Brooklyn Sims to bat. Against Macy Walters. Walters yet to allow a hit. She has struck out three Apaches through the first two innings. Schenniger, 344 on the season. First pitch to her, swung on and missed. Walters looks at the wristband, gets the pitch that she wants. Oh, one pitch. Drilled to center field. Back with the center fielder who reaches up. Can't make the play. Heading around first into second base is Schenniger with a double. Wayne Zach went back, back. I thought she was going to make the catch. Got the glove on it. Hit off the glove to the base of the wall out there. I think she may have been closer to the wall than she, or not as close as she thought. And tipped off the glove of Laney Zach. Kayla Mavis steps in. Runner at second for the Apaches. Nobody out. Mavis, 407 on the season. Pitch is a wild pitch. That's going to allow Schinniger to head down to third. Mavis is trying to sacrifice her over. No sacrifice needed now. It was a strike, however, on Mavis. No balls and one strike. Runner at third now is Schinniger. Pitch is high and away. Catcher popped out at Zach like she was going to fire down the third. One one pitch coming. Swung on and missed. Strike two to Kayla Mavis. Brooklyn Sims is on deck. Four. The Apache's runner at third. Nobody out. One two pitch coming to. Mavis swung on and missed. Strike three. Down goes Mavis for out number one. Brooklyn Sims is going to step in. Pitch squares around the butt. Strike called. Sims. 294 with nine runs batted in. She's the right fielder. Or Coach Renolette in the Apaches. Schoeniger at third. One-two pitch. Again, swung on her bunt and through was Sims. So Sims down, no balls, and two strikes. Macy Walters. Back in the circle. Her 0-2 pitch coming to Sims. Fouls it back. Out of play. Count stays at no balls and two strikes. Walters, 0-2 pitch is coming. Swung on and missed. Down goes Sims for the strikeout. Back-to-back strikeouts for Walters. Top of the lineup is Paige Racisa. Paige struck out in the first. Page 522, 13 homers and 43 runs about an end. Chance to give herself the lead here. Page, two outs runner at third now. Schoeniger was at third with nobody out. First pitch, swung on and missed by Page. Terry Zedike is on deck for the Apaches. Walters 0-1 pitch coming to Racisa. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Walters ahead of Racisa. No balls and two strikes. Walters. 
extremely well. 0-2 oh, pitch coming. 0-2 pitch. Yeah. Swung on it, miss. Down goes Recisa. After the runner got to third, Schinniger with nobody out. Wallers struck out the next three batters in the inning for Fairview. No runs, one hit. No errors, one left on. We're going to head to the top of the fourth inning here at Jack Hewitt Field in Cyrus. We are still scoreless on your Fairview Athletic Boosters scoreboard. Okalona Tavern, located in downtown Okalona, is the home of the famous Oki Tavern Wings. Stop in after the game and get some delicious wings, burgers, fries, onion rings, and enjoy a nice cold beverage while talking about the game. Hours of operation are Tuesday to Sunday, opening at 4 p.m. Check out the Okalona Tavern on Facebook for a menu before you head out. Mexican food specials every Thursday and Sunday. The Okalona Tavern, a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Back at Bucyrus, golden opportunity for the Apaches. Had a runner at third with nobody out. And Macy Walters struck out the next three batters to escape that scoring opportunity. For the Johnnies, three, four, and five. Dakota Staffan, Addy Triplett, and Laney Zach will be the three batters to face Paige Racisa. Two runners left on base for the Johnnies. Two runners actually got into scoring position. Pitch by Rosisa to Staffen is outside. Ball one. Rosisa's pitch to Staffen is high. Two balls and a strike. Staffen 0 for 1. Popped out to the first baseman, Lexa Taylor, her first uh, a bat. <coughs> Rosisa's 2-0 coming to Staffen. Fouled back. Two balls and one strike to the number three hitter, the third baseman, Dakota Staffen. As a team, the Johnnies hit 369, stole 65 bases this season. Two one pitch with bit inside ball three for Rosisa. She has fifty two pitches and thirty three strikes here in the top of the fourth. This broadcast brought to you by the Fairview Athletic Boosters. If you haven't done so, become a Fairview Athletic Booster today. Pitch swung on, fouled off first base side. Count goes full. Three balls and two strikes. Coach Mike Justice. Coaching down there at third. He was the coach of the year in the Licking County League. Stephen, or Stephen was first team all conference. 3 2 count coming, the 3 2 pitch coming to her from Racisa. Just a bit high. Down to first base goes Stephen with a leadoff walk. It's going to bring up Addie Triplett. Now Addie, shortstop. Triplett hit one right back to Racisa in her first plate appearance in the first. She was also first team all conference. 518 for Triplett on the season. 10 homers, 36 RBIs with 13 stolen bases. Addie Triplett at first had 13 steals as well. Pitch is bunted. Racisa off the mound. Fires down to first base. Taylor snags it. First out. Sacrifice is good. Staffen down to second on the sacrifice. So Triplett does her job. 1-3 on the putout for the first out here in the fourth. Going to bring up Laney Zach. Zach knocked one also back to Racisa. This time that was in the second inning. 395 for Laney Zach. Three homers, 22 runs batted in. Addie Zach on deck. Rosisa's pitch swung on and missed. Strike one to Laney Zach. Staffen down at second for the Apaches. Or for the uh, Johnnies, one out. No score here at the top of the fourth. Rosisa's pitch coming to Laney Zach. Swung on, popped away. First base side out of play. Wind still blowing from right to left. Probably 15 to 20 miles an hour. In 
feel dirt flying everywhere. As you can hear in the crowd mic, very gusty. 0-2 pitch to Zach. A little blooper, first base side and foul territory giving chase over there was Alexa Taylor. She came up about a foot short, landed just at the base of the fence. Past the Johnny's dugout on the first base side. Count stays, no balls and two strikes to Laney Zach. Stefan down to second for the Johnnies. One out. Pitch inside. Zach skips out of the way. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, yeah. 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 one, two coming to Laney Zach. Swung on and missed strike three. That's out number two. And for Page, strikeout number now, three. Catcher, Eddie Zach. Three strikeouts for Page, two base on balls. Two outs now, runner still at second for the Johnnies. Addy Zach flew out to center field to Kerry Zedike. Actually, he's in left center. Nice play out there by Kerry. Pitch is high, ball one. Addy Zach, 4 12 with four runs batted in on the season. 0 for 1 today. One zero pitch coming to Addy Zach for Rasisa outside two balls and no strikes. Two balls, no strikes. Addy, 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 Three out of four innings, the Johnnies have a runner in scoring position. Neither team has scored here. As the Johnnies bat at the top of the fourth. 2-1 pitch coming to Addy Zach. Three balls and a strike to Zach. Senior, Pedro Cisa. 3-1 pitch. A little blooper first base side out of play it goes over the first base dugout over there the Johnnies. Now we go full. Payoff pitch coming three and two to Addy Zach runner a second two outs for the Johnstown Johnnies. Rosisa fires away. Strike three called. Addy Zach caught looking for the third out in the inning for the Johnnies. No runs, no hits, no Apache errors, and another runner left. That's three through four for Johnstown. We're going to head to the bottom of the fourth inning here on your Fairview Athletic Booster scoreboard. Still scoreless. We'll be back after this time out. Getting better together is our goal for you and your family at Fairchild Family Chiropractic. Here, we are focused on getting our patients to achieve long-term wellness just beyond short-term symptom relief. At Fairchild Family Chiropractic, we do this by working closely with you and personalizing each treatment plan. Now open and accepting new patients. Come see Dr. A.J. Fairchild at 100 Stadium Drive. Call 419-576-5070 to schedule your appointment or book online at fairchildfamilychiro.com. Dr. Fairchild, a proud Tenora alum says go Rams. If you haven't done so, make sure you get out there and see Dr. AJ and Dr. Kayla can get you your bones back in order. Located right behind Estel, like the old Kmart Plaza right in there. That's where Dr. AJ is, where the old gas station was, across from the car wash. Catcher getting ready for Johnstown, Eddie Zach, the last batter, had to get all suited up. For Fairview, two, three, and four. Kerry Zedike, Allison Rhodes, and Alexa Taylor to bat against Macy Walters. Fairview last inning got Schinniger at third, and Schinniger was left there. Schinniger was there with nobody out, actually, and Walters fanned well, the three straight batters center fielder Zedike. to get out of the jam. For Walters, she has 43 pitches and 33 strikes. Three innings pitched. She's allowed to hit. Struck out seven and has not walked anybody. She was the player of the year 
And he comes in with a 14 and 2 record, 0. .97 ERA. 198 strikeouts with 108 innings pitched. Ground ball by Zedike. Thrown out. So Zedike leads off, and she is thrown out. Shortstop. Three on the put out. Allison Rhodes going to step in. Rhodes 0 for 1. 435 on the season for Allison. She's got 10 homers and 46 RBIs. Rhodes is one of those seven strikeouts. This one's a ball. <laughs> I had to clear my throat there. I got a cloud full of dust and dirt that just zoomed into my face. 1-0 pitch coming to Rhodes from Walters. High and away off the glove of the catcher, Addy Zach, to the backstop. Nobody on for Fairview here in the bottom of the fourth. We are scoreless. Pitch to Rhodes, swung on and missed. Two balls and a strike now to the shortstop, Allison Rhodes. Rhodes had a heck of a basketball season as well for Fairview. 2-1 two, two, pitch coming to Allison. Outside, ball three. Three and one, two Rhodes. Two, one pitch to Allison. Yeah, I was going to say, that, that was a pitch look good. Cal goes full, three balls and two strikes. Caught that outside corner. Payoff pitch from Walters coming to Rhodes. Swung on, high fly ball to right field. Right fielder over there. Puts it away. Ashendell struggled a bit, but retired the high fly ball off the bat of Rhodes. F7 on the put out for the second out. Lexa Taylor, the cleanup hitter, steps in. Base is empty, two outs. Taylor popped out to the third baseman, her first at bat. She taps it foul at the plate. No balls and one strike to Alexa Taylor. 386 for Taylor. Three homers, 26 runs batted in this 2023 season. <coughs> Oh, one pitch coming to Taylor. Good inside. Strike called. No balls and two strikes to Alexa Taylor. Gracie Brown is on deck for the Apaches. Walters 0-2 coming to Taylor. Swung on and missed strike three. Down goes Taylor. Down go the Apaches. No runs, no hits. No Johnny Ayers and no Apaches left on base. Top of the fifth we go here at Bucyrus's Jack Hewitt Field on your Fairview Athletic Booster scoreboard. We are still scoreless. We'll be back right after this time out. Optimal Performance Fitness is not just your typical gym. Here at OPF, you don't pay for a membership just to hop on a treadmill. We are a fitness coaching center that strives to provide an experience like no other. We provide accountability and results. You either work one-on-one -on -one with a certified personal trainer or in a group setting with like-minded people. Here at OPF, we want to change your mindset of going to the gym into something that you enjoy and look forward to doing, rather than going to the gym merely to work out. We train at OPF. We are your cheering section, your motivators, and so to be family. Optimal Performance Fitness strives to help you achieve the best version of yourself. Contact us today to take that first step. It could be life-changing. Stop with all the excuses. Let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. Call Jake at 419-438-7265 and get started today at Optimal Performance Fitness. First pitch swung on and fouled third base side for Johnstown. 7-8-9 against Kura, Fan, and Hoshendell to face... Paige Racisa. Each team has not scored a run. Each team has one hit. Oh, one pitch coming to Emily. High fly ball to right field. In comes the right fielder. Brickland Sims, she can't make the play. Ball falls in front of her. Sims came a long way in. Just couldn't get there in time. 
So a leadoff single by Jens Kura puts her at first base. The number eight hitter, Kayla Fain, steps in. Fain singled and got as far as third in the third. I have a pinch runner for the Johnnies. Pinch runner is Cameron Bollinger. So Bollinger is a pinch runner Bollinger at first. Running. Runner at first. Nobody out here at the top of the fifth of this scoreless battle here in the regional semifinals. Lady Rams and Huron up next at 5 p.m. Racisa's pitch squares around the bunt. Bunted first base side. Racisa off the mound. Tries to snag it before it goes foul off the bat of Michaela Fane. Hey, on, threes, let's go. Pinch runner Boyer back to first. Fane, no balls and one strike. 275 on the season for Fane. She had 13 runs batted in. Receives his 0-1 pitch again. She squares around the butt, butts it in the air. Ball's up there. Shiniger, a huge out there. Bethany Shiniger snags it in the third base side foul territory. F2 on the put out. First out here in the fifth. Next up. Jenna Hachanel steps in. So Boinger's at first with one out now inside the pitch hitter in the side of the helmet. So Hoshendell down to first on the hit by pitch. Pinch runner Boinger down at second. So Johnny's have runners at first and second with one out. Top of the lineup. Next up. Aubrey Del Cicado steps in. Del Cicado is 0 for 2. Popped out to the Fairview Apache infield in the first and struck out swinging in the third. Del Cicado, 362 with 13 runs batted in. She was second team all-conference in the Licking County League. That's from the left side. Receives his pitch to Del Cicado, outside corner, strike called. You're all right, 10, go, 10, you're all right. Find a hole out there, 10. Johnny's threatening here. Have runners at first and second with one out. Top of the lineup. To face for Cisa. Squares around the bunt. Misses. Pitch is called a strike. No balls and two strikes to Del Cicado. Del Cicado as she kicks up the dust and heads right back this way. <laughs> for Cisa's 0 to Del Cicado. Just misses. High and away. One ball and two strikes. To Aubrey Del Cicado. I have to run my equipment through the cleaners. And once we get done today, <laughs> one two pitch coming from Racisa to Del Cicado. Here it comes. Here it comes. Fouled off first or third base side. Schindiger heads on over there, snags it. Throws it back to Paige Racisa. One ball, two strike count to Del Cicado. Runners at first and second. Racisa's pitch swung on and missed. Down goes Del Cicado. Out number two is going to bring up the number two hitter, Macy Walters. Walters, player of the year. Can also help herself here. She's also the opposing pitcher. 412 for Macy Walters. Six homers, 27 RBIs. She is 0 for 1, walked in the first, struck out looking in the third. First pitch is a strike to Macy Walters. Dakota Stephen is on deck. Racisa's 0 1 pitch. Outside ball one, just missed that outside corner. Count even to the ball to the strike. Two outs. For the Johnnies, they have runners at first and second. We are still scoreless as the Johnnies bat here in the top of the fifth inning here in Bucyrus in the regional semifinals. Racisa's pitch, pop, foul behind us, out of play. One ball and two strikes is the count now to Macy Walters. Racisa behind the circle, looks at the wristband. Gets the pitch from the bench on the third base side. Chisa back in the circle. One, two, pitch coming to Walters. Popped up. 
Out of play, first base side. Count stays at one and two. Way to work, five. Keep working, girl. You said a fantastic crowd here for both teams. That's a long drive for Fairview. One, two, pitch coming to Walters. Drills a deep foul. Left side. Walters just missed that one. That would have been a three run home run. But instead, it's just a loud, long strike. Walters digs back in from the right side. Rasisa, back of the circle, looks into the dugout, gets the pitch. It's the wristband, heads back into the circle. One, two, pitch coming to Walters. Fouls it off first base side. That's out of play. Count stays at a ball and two strikes. Johnny's have runners at first and second with one out. Rasisa with a huge strikeout. Got the top of the lineup. Delson Cotto on a strikeout. Macy Walters. One two pitch coming to her from Paige Rasisa. Two pitch. Drilled. Left field. Back. Gone. Walters with a three run home run. Puts the Johnnies on top. Three nothing. The pitch before that, she just missed the three-run homer just a bit foul down the left side. And that one was no doubt left center field just to the left of the scoreboard. Walters puts the Johnnies up. Three-nothing. This is the second hot, the second hit off for CISA. Top of the fifth inning. It's three-nothing Johnnies. Two outs. Baseman, the number three hitter, Dakota Staffen, steps in. Staffen, well, for one, officially, she sacrificed her last at bat in the fourth inning after a walk. She popped out the first, in the first. Staffen, the third baseman, comes in at 494, 12 homers, and 40 runs batted in. Timeout. Coach Ronald asked for time. Standing in foul territory. The umpires are going to get together. Yeah! They appealed the play. Let's see if she missed the base. I think is what they did. What she appeal? Yeah, she's appealing. So Coach Renolette was appealing that the runner did not touch third base on the home run. Staffing. They got together, they talked for longer than one would have expected for that. And they said that she did touch the third base. Hey, who's your third now? Johnny's with a 3 nothing lead off that three run homer by Walters. Staffen steps in, 0 for 1 with a walk here in the top of the fifth. Rasisa's pitch. Foul tipped into the glove. Strike one. For Page, she has 84 pitches, 56 strikes here through four and two thirds innings. That is served into right field. Bounces in front of Brooklyn Sims, so a two-out single by Staffen. Puts another runner on base for the Johnnies. Staffen on it first with two outs. Bring up the number four hitter, the shortstop, Addie Triplett. Triplett is 0 for 2, bounded or bounced back to Rasisa. Both previous plate appearances. 518 on the season for Triplett. First pitch is called a strike. Ball gets away from Schinniger, not far enough to allow the runner of first Staffen to advance. Staffen just two steals on the season. Rasisa gets the sign. Or one pitch. Fly ball, right field. Sims coming on, still coming. It hits right inside the line. Ricochets into foul territory. Staffen around the bag a second. She stops at third. Triplet with a opposite field double. Landed just inside the line. Sims came on strong. Couldn't get there. So runners at second and third. 
for the Johnnies with two outs. Nine hit scores one now. Number five hitter Laney Zack steps in. She is 0 for 2. She bats 395 on the season. Rasisa in the circle. First pitch inside. Strike called. 3 nothing Johnnies. Courtesy of that Macy Walters three run homer earlier this inning. Johnnies have sent eight to the plate here in the fifth. Laney Zach get the plate. 0 1 pitch for Rasisa. Fouled off first base side. First baseman gives chase. Alexa Taylor, she runs out of room, hits the top of the dugout of the Johnnies on the first base side. Go two now, Nan. You're a hitter, babe. Patches and Racisa. Hit scores another. Hit scores another. Trail three nothing. O2 pitch coming from Racisa to Laney Zach. Good on, Inside ball gets away. Here comes the runner trying to score. Throw to Racisa at the plate, not in time. Staffen scores on the wild pitch. Triplet moves up to third. Four nothing now. We say, lady, hit scores another one. Let's go. No pressure. Pitch was in the dirt. Schindiger tried to scoot over and snag it. She just could not. Is headed to the backstop. One ball and two strikes is a count to Laney Zach. Runner at third now with two outs for the Johnnies. Tap third base side, just foul, scooped up in foul territory by Merritt down there for the Apaches. Well, you got a ball coming in. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here on Snow Rams Live. Today's brought to you by the Fairview Athletic Boosters. Thank a booster member today for paying the fee to broadcast this game. One two pitch coming to Laney Zach from Paige Racisa. High swung on and missed. Strike three. Laney Zach helped your fair view out there. But the Johnnies send eight to the plate. They score four huge runs. They do so on four hits. No errors. And one left. Biggest hit that inning was that staff and three run homer. So we're through four and a half here at Bucyrus at Jack Hewitt Field. Johnstown Johnny's four and the Fairview Apaches nothing. We'll be back after this brief timeout. Maybe if I can find a quick commercial, I can't actually see. Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School as well as the Tri-County area since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Contact them at 419-428-3000 or visit them online at Higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. Higby Embroider is a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award. For the Apaches, 5, 6, and 7, Brown, Grinnell, and Schinniger to face Macy Walters. Schinniger, or Gracie Brown is 0 for 1. She struck out in the second. First pitch is a little bit low, ball one. Good spot. For Walters, 53 pitches, 40 strikes. She's pitched four innings, allowed one hit, struck out eight, and has not walked the batter. 1-0 pitch coming to Gracie Brown. Outside corner. Shaves the black off the corner. One ball and one strike. Base is empty. Nobody out. Apaches trail 4-0 as they bat here in the bottom of inning number five. Fairview's the home team. We're in the All Blacks. With the white pinstripes, pitches foul back, giving chases the catcher right at the fence. Good try, Ford. Addie Zach tried to put the glove out there, and she just missed it. So Gracie Brown stays alive. One ball and two strikes. One ball, two strikes. Walters back in the circle. Her 1-2 pitch coming to Gracie Brown. Check swing, stays outside. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. And congratulations to Coach Ronalette down there at third. Picked up her career win 400 a few weeks ago. Last week of April, I believe it was, April 25th. Pitch swung on, foul back again. Out of play, right behind us. Here to hit the concrete. 
Two balls and two strikes to the Apaches. Number five hitter, Gracie Brown. 363 on the season for Gracie Good Brown. Nice hitter now, babe. Pitch popped up on the infield. Shortstop calls it. Third baseman calls her off. And Dakota Staffen puts it away for out number one, retiring Brown. Number five. Initially, triplet call of the short, but she was way back there in the wind, just blowing here, gusting. Realized she couldn't get it, so Staffen called her off. It was actually a better play for Dakota Staffen at third anyways. And she put it away. They'll bring up Courtney Grinnell. First pitch swung on and missed. Grinnell struck out looking in the second. 308 for Grinnell on the season. Grinnell bats from the right side of the plate. Or left side of the plate. Right side. Right side, yes. Pitch. Fly ball to semi-deep left field. Back there's Hashendel. She puts it away for out number two. F7 on that put out. Now Bethany Schinniger steps in, the catcher, number seven hitter. Doubled in the third. 344 for Lady, Bethany. Your way last time. Pitch is high. Ball one to Schinniger. In the third, Schinniger got all the way to third with nobody out. Then Walters struck out. The next three batters consecutively to Strand. The runner at third pitches high and away. Two balls and no strikes. Johnstown leads 4 nothing here in the bottom of the fifth. All four runs in that top of the fifth inning for Johnstown. Walters pitch. Strike call on the inside corner. Two balls and a strike. Two outs. Base is empty here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Johnstown leads Fairview 4 0. 2 1 pitch. Tap foul by the Fairview dugout on the third base side. Biggest blow so far was three run home run off the bat of Macy Walters. That was, I believe, the two outs. 2-2 pitch coming to Bethany Schinniger. Swung on and miss. Down goes Schinniger. Down go the Apaches in the inning for Fairview. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. Top of the six we go here on your Fairview Athletic Booster scoreboard. Johnstown four and Fairview nothing. We'll be back right after this time out. Have your hair and nails gotten out of control over the past few months? Cut and Polish Salon of Defiance is your local salon to get all pampered up. Cut and Polish Salon offers a vast range of quality services, including haircuts, highlights, specialty coloring, waxing, manicures, and pedicures. Please schedule a visit at their fun, relaxing salon where you can be sure that all of your hair and nail needs are a top priority. Cut and Polished Hair and Nail Salon is located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. Be sure to book your appointment today by calling 419-576-5087 or do your booking online by visiting their Facebook page. Cut and Polished Salon says, remember, it's all fun and games until someone breaks a nail. Cut and Polished Salon is a proud supporter of Tenora Rams Live. Back here. On Tenora Rams Live, game brought to you by the Fairview Athletic Boosters. It is 4-0 Johnstown. So we head to the top of inning number six here. Six, seven, and eight. Zach. And Sakura and Fain to face Paige Rosisa. Game changer app's a nice one. It works. My phone probably starting to overheat. has frozen. First pitch, swung on, high fly ball, lands just inside the fence. Bethany Schinniger gave chase. I think Bethany kind of tripped over her own feet, and the ball, as she laughs, heading back. Her and Paige have a little laugh about it. Schinniger heads back behind the plate, lifts up the mask, shakes her head, and she's ready to go. Rosisa gives her a little break. Paige points and says, I'm ready. As long as Bethany, you're all right. Pitch to Zach is a bit outside. One ball, one strike. Nobody out. Base is empty. One 
one-one pitch from Rasisa. Hit shortstop side. Rhodes up with it. Long throw over in time to retire Addy Zach. Six three on the put out. One out here in the sixth inning. Last inning. Johnstown sent eight to the plate, scored four runs on four hits. Emily Emily Yance Kura steps in. Singled and scored in the fifth. First pitch is a ball. For Cisa, she's got 94 pitches, 65 strikes. Five innings pitched, five hits, four runs, three earned runs. She struck out six and has walked two. Pages 1-0 pitch to the plate. Uh, Dude, yes, is a bit high. Two balls and no strikes. I'm feeling next game, that's in a couple hours from now, it'll be right directly in the sun. But nice. We've been under the shade. Our equipment's out in the sun. But personally, we've been back in the shade. That pitch is high. Three balls and no strikes. To Yank Zura. Rasisa's 3-0 pitch. Strike called. Don't gonna bring you two good ones. Top of the six. Patchy's run out of time and out. They trail 4 nothing here in their regional semifinals. Pitch is fouled off first base side. Taylor gives chase. She comes up short as it lands just inside the fence for a long strike. Three balls and two strikes. To the number seven hitter, Emily Yanskura. Payoff pitch coming from Rasisa. Tap foul, third base side. Third base coach down there, head coach. Mike Justice scoops it up. Fires it back to Rasisa. Gonna do it all over again. 3 2 pitch coming from Rasisa. Go in. Emily Yanskura steps back in. She bats from the right side. Rosisa's 3-2 pitch coming. Inside, ball four. One out walk by Yanskura. She heads down to first base. Kayla Fan, the number eight hitter, will step in. Fan. Or Fane. Fane singled in the third, and she popped out in foul territory. To Schinniger. Come on, Matt. First, one out. Hey, Johnny's up 4 0 as they bat here at the top of the sixth. Fane, 275. Sure. See, she has a ground ball to the second baseman. Mavis over to Rick Rhodes at second for the force out. Relay in time for the twin killing. Patchy's turn two. Four, six, three. Nice turn down there by Allison Rhodes to end the inning for the Johnnies. No runs, no hits, no Apache errors, and the double play erases the runner. We're through five and a half here at Jack Hewitt Field in Bucyrus. It is the Johnstown Johnnies four and the Fairview Apaches nothing. We'll be back right after this timeout here on Tenor Rams Live. Is your business looking for someone to take the day-to-day worries of your bookkeeping off your mind? Weber Bookkeeping Solutions of Defiance is here to help. With over five years of small business bookkeeping experience and seven years in banking, you can be confident that your books are in the right hands with Jenny Weber. Let Weber Bookkeeping Solutions handle the monthly tracking and reports so that you can focus on your business goals. Contact Jenny at 419-956-1273, and you can also visit her on Facebook or at WeberBookkeeping.com. Back here at Bucyrus Regional Semifinals, 4 0. Apache's trail, 8 9 and 1 to face Walters. Mavis, Sims, and then top Rasisa. First pitch, swung on and missed by Mavis. Only a bat for Kayla. She swuck out, struck out swinging in the third. For Walters, 66 pitches, 49 strikes, five innings. She's allowed just one hit, has not allowed a run. She struck out nine and has not walked an Apache yet. Apaches need a rally here in the last two innings. As my my alarm goes off, my 
nap alarm in between work and usually baseball or softball games. <laughs> usually try and get like a 20-minute nap in before I head off to whatever school it is that day. One ball, one strike is the count to Mavis. Swung on, fouled back. One ball and two strikes to Kayla. <laughs> The sophomore Mavis steps back in. Get a swung on it, miss. Down goes Mavis for the first out here in the sixth. It was a nice double play there by Mavis. She got the ground ball, fired to Rhodes. Rhodes came across the bag and fired down, or fired over to first base to Taylor to end that top of the sixth inning. And Mavis strikes out here to start the bottom of the sixth. Brooklyn Sims steps in. Sims also struck out in the third. First pitch, foul ball. First base side. Patchy's had a runner at third in the third with nobody out. Sinegar went off with a double, went to third on a wild pitch. Mavis, Sims, and then Racisa all struck out, leaving Sinegar stranded at third. 0 1 pitch, strike two called. Waller's ahead. No balls and two strikes to Sims. Walters pitch coming. Pitch. Fouled off, third base side, out of play. Count stays at no balls and two strikes. Base is empty, one out here in the bottom of the sixth. Patchy's trail, four nothing. Walters pitch coming. Strike three called. Sims caught looking for the second out here. Now batting pitcher. 11th strikeout. Racista. For Macy Waller's top lineup, Paige Racista struck out swinging both times. Waller's first pitch coming to Paige. She fouls it right back at you. You all flinched. I know it. <laughs> at least I think it was in the camera frame. It was in my frame. Patchy's down there the last four outs. Pitch coming to Page. Good miss. That's Just right. misses outside. One ball and one strike. Base is empty. Two outs. Bottom of the sixth here on your Fairview Athletic Booster scoreboard. It's 4 nothing. Johnny's all four runs came in the top of the fifth. One, two, pitch coming. Two. Rosisa stays high. Two balls and a strike. Fairview averaging nine and a half runs a contest, so they're capable of coming back here. Just need to get the rally started. Good pitch. Mr. Rosisa catches the outside corner. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. Two outs here in the bottom of the six. Rosisa, player of the year in volleyball and softball this year for the Apaches and the GMC. Yeah. Swung on and missed. Racista goes down for the third straight time swinging. In the inning for the Apaches. No runs, no hits, no Johnny Ayers, and no Apaches left on base. Top of the seventh we go here at Jack Hewitt Field in Cyrus. It's the Johnnies of Johnstown 4 in the Fairview Apaches. Nothing. We'll be right back after this on your Fairview Apache Athletic Boosters scoreboard. BSN Sports, the recognized leader in team athletic gear. BSN forms partnerships with educators, coaches, and students to build school pride, student engagement, and community spirit. Our partnerships give you access to the most brand names in the industry with all of the hottest products at the best prices. From Nike to Wilson to Under Armour, we can customize any team needs. Since 1972, BSN Sports has brought you the brands that make you untouchable on the field, the court, or anywhere else you play your sport. Contact BSN local sports rep Jim Gares for any of your sports needs at 419 419- 576-8940. Top, top of the seventh we go here in the regional semifinal here in Buse Cyrus. Patchy's the number four team in the state facing the Johnnies. I believe it was the number 10 team in the state. Johnnies are 24 and 2. Patchy's have just one loss. That was to Brian. Patchy's 24 and 1. First pitch is a strike. Two. The Johnnies. Nine 
one and two here to face Racisa. Pitches outside. Catches the corner. Strike called. Koshendell sacrificed in the third and was hit by a pitch in the fifth. Pitches high and way outside off the backstop. It goes. I can't remember. One ball and two strikes. Actually, I think we have a pinch hitter. Pitches fouled off first base side. Peyton Michelle is the pinch hitter, actually, for Hushendell. So Michelle with a 0 2 count, or a 1 2 count. I think it's 1 2. That's low. Two balls and two strikes. Base is empty. Nobody out here in the top of the seventh. Apache's trail 4 0. Pitch swung on and missed. Down goes the pinch hitter, Peyton Michelle. First out here in the seventh inning. And for Paige, that is strikeout number seven. Here we go, Maddie. She's giving up five runs. Or four runs, three earned runs. She struck out seven and walked three so far. Maddie, number 15, Holbrook. Another pinch hitter, Madison Holbrook, will step in. Top of the lineup is where Holbrook will get penciled into. So Holbrook steps in, hitting for the leadoff hitter, number El, uh, uh, Aubrey Del Cicado. Rosisa's first pitch to Holbrook is a little bit low and outside, ball one. Madison Holbrook, the pinch hitter. Here comes the 1 0 pitches. High and away, ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Macy Walters, the scheduled hitter, up next, who supplied all the runs that the Johnnies needed with a three run homer in the fifth. Pitches swung on and missed by Holbrook. You can hear the wind in our crowd mic just picking up speed as we progress here through this contest. Pitch fouled off first base side off the top of the first base Johnny's dugout. Goes down to the right field area. Mavis tracks it down. Proceeds 2 2 pitch coming to the pinch hitter, Holbrook. Strike! Three call. Holbrook caught looking. That's the second out here in the top of the seventh inning. Johnny is with a 4 nothing lead for the Apaches if we look ahead. They're going to send two, three, and four. Z Dyke, Rhodes, and Taylor will face Walters. Walters for the Johnnies has allowed just one hit. Rosisa back in the circle. Pitch coming to Macy Walters. Strike on the outside corner. Walters walked in the first, struck out looking in the third, and that three run homer in the fifth. Doing the job at the plate and on the mound for the Johnnies. Rosisa's 0 1 pitches high and away. Count evens on the ball on the strike. Bases empty. Two outs here in the top of the seventh. Patchy's trail 4 0 to the Johnnies of Johnstown. Pitch is low and outside. Two balls and a strike to Macy Walters. Walters had six homers and 27 RBI coming into the game. She was a player of the year in the Licking County League. Rosisa gets the pitch, looks at the wristband. 2 1 pitch coming to Macy Walters. Fouled off first base side out of play. Count evens, two balls and two strikes. Space is empty with two outs for the Johnnies here in the top of the seventh inning. Two two coming to Walters off the right arm of Rosisa. 
Fouled off first base side, out of play. We'll have this game available on YouTube whenever, or after Saturday, probably, when both teams are. Well, we'll see the time frame when we can actually post it to YouTube. A lot of coaches don't like their videos posted to YouTube right after the game, especially in the regional final. That pitch is inside. Three balls and two strikes. All right, we have a lot of videos on YouTube for basketball and football and whatnot throughout the season. Help your cause here, five. Help your Three, two. There's a count to Macy Walters at the plate. Rasisa's payoff pitch coming to Walters. Good shot. Drill deep left field. At the top of the fence. Tracy Brown fires it back in, holding Walters to a long single. That hit three quarters of the way up. Walters almost had her second home run here. Instead, settles for a long single. The number three hitter, Dakota Staffan, steps in. Staffan, 494 on the season. Single and scored in her last at bat, sacrificed in the fourth, and popped out to first in the first. For Page on the mound for oh, it's part of the batting. Fairview, she got 121 pitches, 80 strikes so far. Six hits allowed, four runs, three earned runs. Page has struck out eight and walked three. Two outs. Runner at first. Next we have pinch runner Madison Fraley in to pinch run for the Johnnies. Pitch was a ball to staff. Rasisa's pitch coming to Dakota Staffen. Fouled off first base side out of play. Such a fantastic crowd here. Fairview always travels well, and the Johnnies have their side filled as well. You can see fans. Well, maybe you can't, but they're lined up on both sides of the outfield all the way around. Black and gold on one side, red and white and gray on the other. 1-1 one, one pitch coming. High fly ball, center field. Zedite goes back, carries in position, puts it away for out number three. Retiring Staffan on a deep fly ball to center field. In the inning for Johnstown. No runs for the Johnnies. They get a double. And she's left stranded there. And no Apache errors, one left on base. Actually, it was just a single. It was a long single. My apologies. I wrote down double. It actually was just a long single off the wall. Bottom of the seventh will go. We'll just keep it here on your Fairview Athletic Booster scoreboard. It is 4 nothing Johnny's. All the scoring was in the fifth inning for the Johnny's. Four runs, six hits, no errors. And for the Fairview Apaches, no runs on just one hit for Fairview. And that was a double, opposite field double off the bat of Bethany Schinniger in the third inning. Off the of they the will seven. face center fielder C. Macy Walters. Six innings for Macy. One hit. She struck out 12 and has not walked the batter. Thanks for joining us here on Tenor Rams Live. Our pleasure, pleasure to bring the game to you from Fairview. And if you're watching from Johnstown or Tenor fans are probably watching too. You know, Cheryl, thank you for posting. I can't actually see my screen, but I can see Cheryl. I think Cheryl's name is there. I'm not sure. Between the glare and the dust, I can't see any comments in the comment section. Z Dyke, Rhodes, and Taylor. Carrie Z Dyke steps in. She is 0 for 2. She comes in with a 4 58 average. Heck of a career for Carrie. On the basketball floor, first pitch of her is high and away. Ball one, she collected her 1,000th point this past season. So congratulations to Carrie. One zero pitch to Zedike is high. Ball two, two balls and no strikes. Macy Walters trying to close it out. Zedike bats from the left side. Two zero pitch coming. Good pitch, good pitch. Tries to check her swing. She fouls it off into the Apache dugout on the third base side. Count to Zedike has two balls and a strike. Base is empty. Nobody out. Apache's trail by a score of 4 nothing. 
Zedike back in the left-handed batter's box. Walters back in the circle. Her 2-1 pitch to carry. Squares her on the bunt. Bunts it foul. Third base side. Nice get her now. Finish her up. Count evens to carry. Two balls and two strikes. Zedike back in the batter's box. 2-2 pitch coming to carry. Walters lets it go. Slaps it foul just over the head of the... Hits the top of the Apache dugout, actually, and ricochets down the left field line. Hoshendell picks it up and fires it back in. Two balls and two strikes to the number two hitter for the Apaches, Kerry Zedai. Ellison Rhodes awaits on deck. Walters 2-2 coming to Zedai. Slaps it foul, hits the top of the plate, actually, and comes back to the backstop. So Zedai stays alive with a... 2-2 two, two count. Base is empty. Nobody out here in the bottom of the seventh. Apache's trail 4-0. All runs for the Johnnies came in the fifth inning. 2-2 two, two coming to Gary Zedite. High ball three. Zedite's worked the count full. Three balls and two strikes. Apache shortstop. Number three hitter, Ellison Rhodes, awaits on deck. 3-2 coming from Zedike. She asks for time, steps out. Walters checks the wristband. Zedike back in the left-hander's batter's box. Walters back in the circle. 3-2 pitch coming to Zedike. Yes! Swung on and missed. That was a riser. Got Zedike swinging for the first out. Now batting. Shortstop. That's a 13 strikeout for Walters. Allison Rhodes getting ready to step into the box. Quick substitution. Thank you, Carol, for watching. And Cheryl and everybody from Fairview and Sonora and surrounding areas and all around the country, actually. People watch, tune in, radio, or on Facebook. So we have a defensive substitution that comes in for the Johnnies in that first base. Ava Peterman into the game. Pitch to Rhodes as a strike. Allison Rhodes. Over two, struck out in the first and flew out to left in the fourth. Rhodes three or 435 on the season. Allison bats from the right side. Pitch coming to her. It's way outside. Count evens at a ball and a strike. Good miss, good miss, Major. All right. But it was our pleasure to bring this game to you from people in Fairview that could not make it here. 1-1 one, one pitch coming. Good pitch. Strike call. Rhodes behind the ball and two strikes. Alexa Taylor waits on deck. One, two, coming to Rhodes. Swung on and missed. Down goes Allison. Second strikeout. Let's get it out right here, White. Let's go. Allison was second team all conference, by the way. Sorry if I omitted that earlier. First baseman, Taylor. Alexa Taylor was honorable mention all GMC this past season. She is over two, three eighty six on the season. Timeout on the field, coach. Mike Justice goes out, has a conversation with her infield. Waller's 14 strikeouts. She has 91 pitches and 67 of those a strike. This is a fantastic performance by Macy Walters. I don't think too many teams, was the way Walters was pitching today, would have much success. Final chance for the Apaches is Alexa Taylor. Pitch coming to Alexis inside. Good miss. That's a good miss. Ball one. But the Apaches trail 4 nothing here. Now their final out. 1-0 pitch coming. High fly ball. Center field. Laney Zach puts it away to retire the Apaches. 
F8 on the put out in the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. Final. 4 nothing. Johnston Johnny's uh, will play Saturday at 12 o'clock versus the winner of our next game, Snoran Huron. But congratulations to Fairview. Their season ends at 24 and 2. And we couldn't be more prouder of the Apaches for representing three GMZ teams, Tenora, Fairview, and Edgerton in the regional finals. We had 16 teams in the Sweet 16 and Division 3 and 4. But Fairview, what an honor. Four, 24 and 2. And their senior class. Class, Paige out. Rosisa, Kerry Zedike, Gracie Brown, and Ellison Rhodes. Thank you for your four years of service. And we've enjoyed covering you guys for four years. So sad. Season ends 24 and 2. Uh, Johnstown with the victory. They improved to 25 and 2. Winning pitcher was. Fascinating performance by Macy Walters. She allowed just one hit. No run, struck out 14, and did not walk anybody. Loss goes to Paige Rosisa. Can't, oh, what a career by Paige. Just amazing. She gets the loss. That's just her second loss of the season. She falls to 21-2. and two. Paige pitched seven innings, allowed six hits, four runs, three earned runs. Paige struck out eight and walked three. All four runs came in the fifth inning. Three runs came off the bat of the player of the year in the licking conference. Macy Walters hit a three-run home run and another run scored on a wild pitch for their four runs. They had four runs on four hits in that fifth inning. Box score was four runs, six hits, and no errors for Johnstown for Fairview. No runs, just one hit, and did not commit an error. So final again here from Jack Hewitt Field in Pusiris. Johnny's move on with a 4 nothing win over the Fairview Apaches who see their fantastic season come to an end at 24-2. and two. Johnstown will play the winner of the next game between Tenora and Huron. That is a 5 o'clock first pitch, so we're going to take a little bit of time, dust off our stuff, and be back here at 5 o'clock for game two. But again, thank you everybody for watching and listening, and especially again, congratulations to Fairview. Be a tough end of your season, but at the end, just hold your heads high. Had a fantastic season that ended at 24 and 2. So, appreciate everybody from Fairview for watching and everybody else who tuned in. But, Apaches, be a long ride home, but just remember the good times. We'll be back with the second game in about an hour from now. Have a good afternoon slash evening, everybody. Thanks for listening to this exclusive presentation of Tenora Rams Sports. Be sure to tune in next time when we bring you more Rams action. And follow us online at TenoraRamsSportsAudio.com or on Twitter at Tenora Rams Audio. 